Round one. Fight. <laughs> What is up? What is going on, BW Sports One World? It is your boy The Lion, and I'm here with another great interview on Combat Zone. That's right. But first and foremost, can't forget our lovely friends and family and our sponsorship partnership on Rockstar Realty 317-503-8322. Talk to Sean. Talk to talk to Sean at Talk to Tucker today. Buying or selling home 317-503-8322. Driving for dyslexia 317-643-1105. It's a great nonprofit organization to help teachers with resources to be able to teach kids with dyslexia a lot better. 317-643-1105. And of course, if you want to be elite like myself, you check out Zach Deere at Elite Performance 765-499-1005 to get your elite fitness on. And Aries Academy and Aries Sports Vision Training, they give you eyes of the gods. That's right. Aries, the god of war, 317-537-537. 7433, train them eyes, get that better reaction time and depth perception. 317 537 7433. Without further ado, we have the Irish Spartan himself back in the combat zone, Mr. Scott O'Shaughnessy. What is going on, brother? How are we doing? Doing good, my friend. How are you? Good to see you. Always lovely to see you. And you know, you still look like Magic Mike. You know, there was obviously not much uh, damage taken in your fight last week. Uh, yep. BKFC 16 has come and gone, and your arm was raised victorious in the first round due to a technical knockout. Yes. How are you feeling after that? I mean, I feel good with it. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it was a 48-second, you know, knockout victory over somebody who's very, very, very good. A very game opponent. I understand there's some sort of, uh, you know, maybe disagreements and, and stuff like that with it. But as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I did my job and my hand was raised and I, I'm very uh, happy with the way I fought. You did. Congratulations again on getting that first uh, win in your debut fight in bare knuckle. Um, so back up a little bit. You know, we talked to you a couple weeks before the show or before the yeah on the show before the fight. Um, now we kind of go into, you know, fight week, obviously for all the fighters, you know, you've been in the MMA world, you're transitioned over to bare knuckle that yeah. last, the second to last week is usually the last hard week Correct. of training. Then you yep. kind of not necessarily slow down, but you work more on your cardio, you watch your weight and, and you kind of relax compared to the normal fight camp. Going into that last week before the fight, you know, tell us what was going on, how training camp was going, what you were feeling like, and then leading up into your travel to weigh-ins. Yeah, so j kind of how you said, you know, the, the as fight week approaches, the work's done, right? So we don't try to make any sort of gains really that week. There's too risk uh, of injury if you try to push too much. It's more of a recovery week and really just a kind of just keeping pace with where we were as far as cardio is concerned. Um, weight's an issue, um, so there's some sweating stuff going on, but it's really more or less just recovery, focus, a lot of mental uh, stuff that week, a lot of visualization, and just making sure that our mind is up to par with where our body is at, and that we're kind of in line, you know, mentally and, and, uh, and physically. So that fight, you know, fight week is it's, it's a it's a mental week. It's not really a physical week. Correct, and and I think a lot of people don't understand, especially that's never been in the fight realm, regardless of what combat sports you're in. You don't understand how much mental exhaustion is taken in fight camp. Uh, everybody knows about the physical aspect. You know, you got to push yourself. You got to you got to train harder. You got to push this weight. You got to lose this weight. You go. You're, you're pushing each other. You're sparring and everything. 
But a lot of it has to do with mentality and getting that mentality correct, especially 100%. going through that hard ass camp that you guys go through. You know, just yeah. kind of tell us about your mental your mental status throughout your fight camp. Yeah, and and that's kind of to be honest with you, like it in terms of like professional athletes, I'm sure it's almost any sport, but especially combat sports because it's so personal. It's such an intimate thing. It's it's, it's a lot of eyes on you, and and you alone. You know, week of the fight, it's a quieter week, right? So all these thoughts that now you've been trying to almost, you know, really kind of pushing away as far as keeping ourselves busy athletically and, and training. Now that we're a little bit more still, there's a lot more time and space for those thoughts to come into your mind. And a lot of those thoughts are, are negative. And I'm just being honest with you. And a lot of people like to talk about that kind of stuff. Those negative thoughts, they hit you and they, they come at you in waves. Um, so a lot of that is just taking those thoughts, dealing with them and battling them and just sending them away. So it's almost like you, you take in what it is, um, understand it's 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 normal, <laughs> you know, dealing with it and just kind of shooing it away and keep telling yourself. I always tell myself, you know, I'm a warrior. I'm not going to quit. and I'm going to be victorious. And I always I repeat that in my head probably a million times a day. I'm a warrior. I will not quit. I will be victorious um, because you got to battle that. And if you don't if you don't focus on that mental stuff, it's going to come out. You know, it, it, and if it comes out and you only deal with it for the first time when you're inside a ring or inside a cage when the lights are on, you're in trouble. A little too late. I, yeah, you got to deal with it before, man. If you don't, it's it's going to show. And uh, a lot of fighters are scared of it. And I used to be scared of it whenever I was a younger fighter. But now I just use it as, as um almost as fuel. Like I just I, I take that and I use it and I, I kind of bottle it up into this, you know, fighting's a dark sport. I mean, people don't talk about it a lot, but it's, it's darkness. You know what I mean? And you got to be. You got to be able to go to that dark place and the opponent, it's it's your, it's my goal. I'm going to pull you in that darkness with me. And if you're going to come with me, we're going to have a good fight. And if not, you're, you're going to be in a lot of trouble, you know, but I'm going to be in a dark spot fighting. We ain't fighting in light. We're fighting in shade as far as That's I'm right. concerned. That's right. So kind of just giving a couple examples of what those um, questions and, and that negativity that would come through your mind throughout that, you know, that last week of fight game and not just you and it's a lot across the board of all fighters, you know, that, that negativity, those thoughts, those yeah. second guessing kind of fill us in on a couple of examples. Yeah. The, every fighter's got it. It's the one there's, there's fighters that'll talk to you, be honest about it. And there's ones that are lie, but they both feel them. I can assure you. That's why I like you, man. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just, it's, it's am I prepared enough? You know, am, am I am I going to win? You know what I mean? Am I is this person a better man than me? Are they a better fighter than me? You know, it's just it's a lot of it's just, it's almost human nature. We start to kind of pick ourselves apart because we want to do well. and We want to win and we don't want to disappoint people and want to disappoint ourselves. Um, but it's really just that is this is it's it comes down to. You know, there's there's it's a scary thought. You know what I mean? If, if, if you knew, you know, tomorrow you were going to get into a fight, you'd be pretty damn nervous today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But every fighter deals with it, you know, and, and it's just a matter of, I accept that. I know it's not me. It's not my mentality thinking those things. It's a bunch of outside stuff that I really can't control as far as when they come in, but I can control how long they dwell. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I deal with it, realize this isn't my thoughts. This isn't Scott's thoughts, right? This is some BS that doesn't even exist. It, has, it doesn't belong to me. And I send it away. You know what I mean? You got to try to take the good and make that your home. Make that kind of what takes up the space in your mind, the good thoughts. I am a warrior. I will not quit. I will be victorious. And I let that, you know, maintain that real estate in my head. And just, I try not to leave any room for the negative stuff. You know what I mean? But I, it used to feel like the, the negative aspects and those negative thoughts, you know, what would, would meant that I, that I really wasn't ready. Or I really was scared. And I really was just um, afraid of, of, uh, of losing, you know what I mean? But it's, that's really nothing to do with it. It's really just, um, it's part of the game. It's, it's, it's part of the, the anxiety and the, and the, the stress that comes with the fight business. Uh, and be the best fighters out there are the ones that can deal with that and, uh, and perform despite it. Mm -hmm. I like that, man. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Mike Tyson, what he said, not, not the whole thing that yeah. everybody takes, but you know, it's everything until you get punched in the face. No, he talked about, you know, how nervous he was, how scared he was in 100%. that dressing room, in that locker room before every fight and every, you're correct. Every fighter, every true fighter has that thought in their mind because you know, you're walking in to a ring or a cage or how, whatever the setup is knowing 
that this guy across from you is getting ready to try to beat the shit out of you, and you got to do whatever you can to defend yourself and put him on his ass first. Yeah. And if you don't, then that's a problem. But as you walk from the locker room to the ring or cage, that's when that confidence really starts to build. That's when it needs to really fulfill out, and all that negativity is gone. Yeah. And, you know, and that's I remember hearing that speech from Mike Tyson. Donald Cerrone had a really good one that he did a video on as well. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's a real aspect. You know, and a lot of people, they want to be too tough, too macho to even give it to even talk about it. I think I think it takes more strength to deal with it and to be open about it. You know, that's that's what makes us the, the, the athletes that we are and the warriors that we are is we we can take that and, and allow and allow that to enhance us. And not hinder us. You know, an average person can't deal with. They'll crumble. Must yep. be true. They'll crumble under that under that amount of anxiety and under that amount of just, you know, just it's just, it's just a stressful spot. You know what I mean? It's that's the kind of toughest way to, or the most, I guess, layman's way to put it. You know, it's 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 an it's an amazing amount of stress. Some people deal with it differently. You know, there's some who will pretend it doesn't there and they laughing and joking around and this ain't a big deal and they're trying to trick themselves and trick themselves. And I saw my opponent do a little bit of that before the fight. And the more I saw him do that, the more I, the more I was kind of hung, like making me more hungry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, seeing him laughing like it was no big thing. This another day. Well, ain't another day for me. Right. I'm here. To, I'm here to do really bad things to you. Yep. And if you're not willing to do that, too, then, then shame on you. Yep. And seeing that out of any opponent, like if whoever you're going, not just Melvin Glard or whoever it is, to see that out of your opponent, that kind of looks uh, to me when I used to see that kind of, you know, I was a new guy going into amateurs and, mm -hmm. you know, I'd see my opponent kind of laughing and shaking it off. That's kind of a disrespect to me thinking that, OK, you're not prepared for what I'm getting ready to bring to you. True. But I honestly believe there's it could be that. But in, in my opinion, with that kind of, and you see it on all levels of sport, you, you know, as far as especially combat sport, you see it, and you see it in UFC fighters, you see it in BKFC fighters, Bellator, you see it in all of them, even in lower, you know, local shows. Mm -hmm. You see the guys backstage pretending like it ain't no big thing. They're underplaying everything, right? They're minimizing what they're doing, and they're just trying to trick themselves because inside they're terrified. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, and if they don't act all joking and laughing, and they don't make it a big deal, then the fear is going to overwhelm them. Right. right. So but they try to they try to do the opposite. I try to use that. Like I said, I go to the darkest, most terrible spots in my mind that I can go to. And as I'm walking to that cage, I might as well be walking to hell in my head. I, I, Speaking. Of, OK, so I want to kind of elaborate on that real quick with your job that you do and all this, the, the shit that you've seen. Yeah. Do you ever bring some of those past experiences into your mind kind of being in that dark place to use against your opponent when you're in there? hundred percent. Yeah. Without, without question. You know what I mean? Because it's a fight is a fight. You know what I mean? And there's different, obviously there's different levels and there's different types of fights, but right. it all comes down to our, I guess, we're going to call it bravery, you know, whatever it, it comes into what we have in here in our minds when we have in our hearts. If you're not, if you're a person who's going to quit, you're going to quit no matter what. It's good. If you're going to quit in a fist fight, you're going to quit in a, in a damn pillow fight. You're going to quit in a gun fight. But if you have it inside of you, no matter what I do, I'm not going to quit. Even if I die, I'm going to die fighting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to quit. And that, that mentality can be transferred to any environment. Like if it's a SWAT hit, I know in my head, I, I, I might die going through this door, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go through the damn door. You understand? I'm not going to go away. Yep. And it's the same. It's, it's the same thing as I'm walking to that ring. It's the same thing. I've, I've, I'm, I'm ready. I'm willing to go. And if you're going to come with me, let's, let's, let's have a pretty shitty journey together, but, but we're going, you know what I mean? And, and it's different to an extent of the, the avenues and the environments are different. The mentality is exactly the same, no matter what, no matter what it's, I'm going to fight until there's nothing left in me. I'm either going to, and if, if it's a professional fighting environment, I'm either going to go out like there's a whole the whole Spartan thing, you know, with my shield or on it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all there is to it. I'm going to fight until there's nothing left. It's no different on a SWAT hit. It's no different if someone pulls a gun on me and starts shooting at me. Mm -hmm. We're in a fight. I mean, I ain't running from you. And we're, let's, let's see. Let's let's see how it plays out. I like it. I like it, brother. So we're got, we're kind of going through that last week of training. You know that that kind of ease down week. You got a what about a couple hour drive from where you're at? To yeah, it's it's Lux about. Yeah, it ain't. It's it's a touch over an hour. It ain't bad. 
Okay, so you you probably came made that drive the day of weigh-ins. So what I did because I had some weight to cut, and the weigh-ins okay. were weigh-ins were eight a.m. Oh, okay. Morning. So I didn't want to. The way I normally cut weight is I'll start my weight cut the night before, mm-hmm. and then I'll wake up because I float some weight overnight, and I'll wake up and I'll cut the rest. You know, the day of weigh-ins. You know, I, I try not to cut ten pounds or whatever in one day. I right. try to put it in a couple of days. That way, I'm not killing my body as much. Um, so I went in there early. I went Wednesday night, stayed at the hotel to cut weight. And then th- there was a bit of um, a, a crappy, you know, realization. There was no freaking bathtubs in the hotel. I, I, I cut, yeah, I cut in bathtubs. That's the way I do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like, I'm not a fan of saunas. I've had too many bad experiences. So I use the tub with the hot water, Epsom salt and green alcohol, right? It's a little concoction that we, a lot of fighters use. Yep. And there was no tub. So I, I'm calling my coaches like that. I don't know how to, I got, I got like seven pounds to cut. There's no freaking tub. So we start kind of freaking out, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to drive back to slide? I'll cut weight, waste money in my hotel room, you know, whatever. And um, eventually I just you end up using the the shower, turn the freaking hot ass water on, wrap towels around me and sat and laid on the floor of the shower for about, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. And we got, we got pretty much all the weight off that night, which was really, was, I, I was, stressed over it but it worked out mm-hmm. do you ever remember as a younger when they used to have the trash bags we used to cut out the holes yep. in your arms and for yeah, the before, wrestling yeah. meet the next yep <laughs> yep i remember sleeping in those sometimes you know i had about two pounds to cut let's just sleep and not eat that day and be good mm-hmm. yep yeah. god it was so stupid of us. <laughs> wasn't it you know i'm just gonna say something really stupid i used to take the the walk behind mower okay just normal push mower uh-huh Put a trash bag underneath my hoodie sweatshirt, go out there, and my mom and dad thought I was crazy. I mean, I'm sure their neighbors thought, what in the hell is this? Yeah, your neighbor is he's doing it again. It's 95 (laughs) degrees out, and I'm out there in a sweatsuit mowing the yard, pushing it. I it works. He's doing it again. (laughs) Yeah, he's doing it. (laughs) So day of weigh-ins. You're there. You see Melvin. You know, I'm, I'm sure that was kind of obviously, you know, you had your your meetings and stuff. But yeah. that was the first time that you guys locked eyes and all that. How yeah. was that? You know, what was that feeling like for you, especially with the person that they put you up against your first go round in BKFC? It was a bit surreal, man, you know, because I mean, I, I'm not I would never I don't I don't speak badly of people, even if I think badly of them. I'm just going to be classy enough. I'm not going to talk about it. And I, I try to be a professional. Right. Um, but I respect the hell out of Melvin and, and what he's done with his career through fighting. You know what I mean? I've, I've always loved watching the guy fight. Mm-hmm. I've, and I've, I've seen him a few times in person, and, and you know, but it's been a long time, never since he's kind of became, you know, the young assassin, Melvin Gillard, you know, once he reached the kind of the pinnacles that he did. Right. Um, so seeing him in that environment and, and facing off with him was a bit surreal. But it, it, it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't anything that was overwhelming. It was just like, damn, I'm, it's just in my mind. Holy shit, I'm about to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat Melvin Gillard. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat Melvin Gillard. You know, it just, it was almost just, it, it was just a cool feeling. Like it just, like shit. This is like, this is big leagues right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm fighting a big league fighter on a big league platform. Um, and it was, it was just a really, it was just a really cool and something that I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. So. At weigh-ins, you know, you kind of, again, you're face-to-face with your opponent, whoever that would be. You're able to look into the eyes of your opponent. When you looked into Melvin's eyes that weigh-in, what did you see? He, he looked – he didn't look away. I tried not to break – I look at your eyes and I don't I don't turn like, – I don't look away from you. I stare into your eyes and, 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 to, and whoever not breaks first, you know, breaks. Um, we stare. We got a good stare. You know, it wasn't anything disrespectful, but we both right. had the same mindset. We both can tell we were trying to show the other person we were ready to fight. Um, I did notice his eyes. He was looking at me, but his eyes were moving. Um, for whatever, you know, it could be a, a bunch of things. I know I try not to break any. My eyes stay straight and they look dead. They don't move. I'm fixated. Mm-hmm. His eyes were kind of moving, so I don't know. I don't know if that was, you know, could be it could be his anxiety. You know what I mean? Because shit, he's fighting an unknown guy who nobody knows. He's supposed to beat him, and I don't know. Maybe he had some nerves about that. There's there's no telling. But you know, he he's, he we got a good stare. Um, but I did notice his eyes were kind of moving, and that built that that made me feel even better about myself. To be honest with you. Okay. Well, 
You're, that's the day before the fights. Now yeah. we're at fight day. You know, I'm I'm sure you got a good night's sleep as best as you can in a hotel. Yeah. You know what? Uh, kind of walk us through before the, the you know the fight day before the fight happens. Yeah. So I, I the night before I try to stay up pretty late because I want to sleep in as much as possible. Right. I want to. I don't want to be awake in my thoughts all day. You know what I mean? So I try to stay up watching TV and um, sleep in as late as possible. I think I, I probably woke up around noon on uh, on fight day and just hung out, watched a movie, got a little bit of lunch, um, and just started really just. What'd you watch? Training day. Okay. Good I, movie. <laughs> yeah, watch Training Day. Um, Is that your go-to movie before? No, fight? it was this. I was I was messing around on Netflix and. <laughs> and I saw it, and I was all right. We'll give this a watch again. Uh, it's a good one. So, yeah. We, yeah so, yeah, random. But we watch Training Day. Uh, just laid in bed, and and it's almost like every hour, every it seems like every you know ten minutes, it almost feels like. Um, uh, mental preparation is a big thing. So, like we talked about it already, I try to just hone myself mentally to become almost transformed into something else that. You got to find those parts of yourself again every hour. It's like I'm becoming more of this and more of this, more violent, you know, more dark, more violent, more dark, more prepared mentally. Because you got to be willing. Like I said, in my mind, I'm going into a battle that I might not come back from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and I, 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 that's not reality, but that's that's how I got personally. That's how I got to make it. I got to get myself there. I got to go that dark. Yep. Everybody may not have to do that. Good for them, but I do. Um, so that, you know, the closer we get, the darker I get, the closer we get, the darker I get, darker I get, the more confident I get. Um, and then, you know, once we, we show up to rules meeting, um, you know, Dave Feldman gave it, gave a good speech about, you know, how he wants his fighters to perform and how he finds the, you know, the baddest athletes that he can uh, to, to, to put them on a platform to, to, you know, showcase, you know, their abilities as some of the best fighters, bare, you know, best bare knuckle boxers, you know, in the world, you know, and then, that's what he wants and that's who he thinks we are. And at that point, you know, I'm like, shit, what's well, if they think that of me and they put, they think that enough of me to put me against a seasoned vet, it's in, I'm going to make the most of it. You know what I mean? So hearing him talk was pretty inspirational. Um, had the rules meeting. Um, and then we just kind of got ready to start getting hands wrapped and everything. But, you know, it, it was a, it was definitely a day that I'll, I'll never uh, forget. Does, you, does that darkness really take full um, full effect once those wrist straps are put on and you know that it's ready to roll? No, for me, it it, it doesn't start to the, they they call you from the they call you from the room and that you you're pretty much on deck. Gotcha. You know what I mean? You you know you're fighting next, and the fight could end any minute, and you could be up. You know what I mean? So at that point, that's when it starts to get really intense. Excuse me, intense. Um, just focusing around pacing. I mean, I'm, it's just you're backstage and you're, you're waiting. It's like you, you, it gets to a point to where, you know, I, I can't get my hands on this person fast enough. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to do it right now. You know what I mean? I, and I got to wait. And the more, the more, every second I wait, the more I want to do it. Every second I wait, the more I want to do it. Um, But I don't sit still. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't sit in silence. I move around and I, I talk to myself and I, I grunt and I, I, I yell and I, I do everything that I can to, to, to put myself there, but it doesn't really take hold until right before I'm walking out. And then once I'm walking out, I'm confident, but I'm, but I'm level, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not the same person right then and there. Right. Whoever, I'm, I'm something different when I'm walking to the cage. I'm not the same person people knew. Um, and I, I can turn it off, but I can turn it on pretty quick. But yeah, that as soon as I start walking, it ain't me no more. Mm -hmm. It's 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 me at my most primal, you know, version. So the walk down to the ring, they call you. You're on deck. Now that fight's done. You guys are heading. You guys get to the ring. They make the announcements. They tell you to toe the line. In that instant. I mean, that quick instant of, okay, I'm walking from the ring to this line. Here we go. What's the last thing you think of before that bell rings? That's it. Like, let's, let's shock the world. You know, well, let's, you did. Let's do this. You know what <laughs> I mean, mean you, you, you quote unquote shocked the world. Yeah. And, and that, and that's, and that's, you know, as far as my last thoughts, that's it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I know who I am and, um, 
I got to show this person who I am and I'm going to, I'm going to do that as violently as I can. You know what I mean? And the it, talking to some fighters, cause I had, a, you know, um, one of my buddies, Eric Thompson fought that night too. And we, we talked a bit after his fight. Um, and he was telling me how the punches getting punched didn't really, he couldn't tell the difference. He was like, he landed punches. He's like, just be careful. You're landing punches. You can feel it. But he, he was telling me, you know, the punches ain't shit. The punches ain't nothing. You know what I mean? So, I, and I was, I think the first time we landed with Melvin, he hit me with a left hook and um, it, it, it wasn't a big deal. Like, I mean, it hit me and it, you know, it wasn't, it didn't feel great, but it wasn't, it didn't feel any different. Cause I never been hit with a bare knuckle in the, from the, in that, in that environment before. Right. You know what I mean? And it wasn't anything, you know, it, it, it wasn't anything different than, you know, an MMA glove or something like that. As far how as did it feel on your end when you, you know, you, you got him with a very clean shot. Yeah, that so put him up against the ropes. That yeah, we'll talk so about here in just that second. that I'm shot, ready. that second, the cross didn't do much. Didn't really hurt. The I jabbed him. The way the angle caught it on the broadcast, it was it was shooting behind his head, so you couldn't quite see it. I snapped him with a jab, really, really good. Um, that knocked his head back, and I, my hands are still kind of black from it. I don't know if you could see or not at all. My hands are still kind of a little bit discolored from here, it. Here, show that up again. Um, Let me see. Yeah, you made a, the pictures. It might not be as much anymore. See my fingers? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't much, but it, it's it was pretty black. Um, so I caught him with a good jab, and it, it didn't feel good. I got, <laughs> like I was like, shit. You know, I, I mean, I know my hand wasn't broke. Even if it was broke, I'd have hit him with it some more. But it hurt. You know what I mean? So I felt it. Um, oddly enough, that's the only. As, as soon as I landed that punch, okay, and that's what that feels like. And I didn't. I never felt any more. And then as soon as he hit me, the, he hit me the one left hook, and that's the only punch I felt. I didn't feel any. He hit me, I think, one other time after that, um, and I didn't. I don't. I didn't feel him. Like they didn't. It didn't even register as if I just got hit or anything, or that I even punched. It was just. It was weird. It was almost that first kind of exchange. All right, this is what this is. I'm. Fine. This is cool. Let's now. I, now that's out of the way. Now let's let's get let's get back to work. Well, it didn't take you long after that to get back to work because, like you said, I mean, those that combination that you put on him, it rocked him. It put him up against the ropes. Now, this is kind of where the controversy starts. Uh, you know, I'll air quote controversy. Yeah. Uh, you did what you were supposed to do. A lot of people were bitching and complaining, well, you hit a downed opponent, blah, blah, blah. To me, he should have, and we talked about this before, but, you know, I want to kind of bring this out. To yeah. me, looking at it on the broadcast um, as a fan, as a as a spectator, it looked like, as I know the rules, in boxing at least, when a fighter falls against the ropes, it stops his – it stops his fall to the canvas, which technically should have been considered a knockdown. The ref should have let you know that it was a knockdown and pulled you away and then started his count. Now, what happened was you did what you were supposed to do as a fighter because the ref did not tell you anything. And at that point, it could have changed momentum really quick. He could have jumped back up and, and hit you. And then you it could have been a total different outcome right. and, and perspective of – you know, half-ass spectators, half-ass fans. Yeah. You know, let me t – let's tell the world what you felt in that moment. You know, you saw him fall down up against the ropes. You looked at the ref. You didn't hear anything from the ref. Then you started doing what you needed to do and finished the fight. Yeah. So, first off, I want to – my coach for this – for my head coach for the uh, the camp, Kenny Stevens, he – we worked on exactly kind of what we did. So Melvin did hit me the first exchange. The second exchange, even on the broadcast, like he's got his opponent hurt. I wasn't hurt at all at that point. The first punch he hit me with got me. I saw I saw the flashes of, of, of some white. The second one, I was trying to get him to chase me because knew, we knew the first round he was going to be aggressive. We knew the first round he was going to chase. So as I'm kind of back, I'm kind of shuffling backward. I know he's chasing me just exactly how he did. And as he chased me, I knew he was going to come with a wild punch, just like he did. And I knew if I threw a straight, I'd beat his hook. So my cross landed before his hook did, and that's what that's what hit him and knocked him and knocked him back. When he fell, I knew you know when you hit somebody good. Mm -hmm. So I knew I I knew I cracked him. Um, and when he fell back with stumbling, if you rewatch the broadcast, it, it was it isn't like I immediately mm -mm. jumped on him. I was I almost I was anticipating the referee to call a knockdown. All right. 
He didn't. So as soon as I kind of look and I'm kind of gauging what's going on, I don't hear anything. As fighters, we're supposed to just we're we're going to fight until we're told to stop. Absolutely. Right? Period. So I didn't. I was not told to stop, and I even hesitated. Mm -hmm. Right. So because again, I've only done MMA. I've done I've I've, I've done amateur box. I never was a pro boxer. I did amateur boxing and professional MMA. So as I come in, I notice he's low to the ground. I did not see his butt on the floor. I knew he wasn't on the ground because in the rules meeting, they said three points of contact. This is all they said to us. Three points of contact is equivalent to a knockdown. He said he didn't mention anything about the ropes in the rules meeting. None of the referees did. They said three points of contact. So when I see all I see is two feet on the ground. In my mind, he's up. And I got to change that. Mm -hmm. I don't want him up. So I start, I, we, we allowed to clench, right? So I grabbed the back of his neck with my left hand and I start feeding him. Mm -hmm. And, I and feed those him. were, those were rough punches. Every punch was hitting him very, very clean. And I'm thinking, damn, this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm in my mind. I'm thinking this fight is over. This fight is over. And I'm just kind of waiting. I'm not going to stop until I'm pulled off or until I'm told to stop. Right. Um, the referee, he did, he, at that point, he did yell knockdown. Okay. He yelled knockdown. And as I backpedal, cause I was, I, I backed up. I saw the referee wave his hands and then I, I threw my hands up and, you know, and, you know, in celebration, you know, whatever the referee saw that made Melvin made him feel as though Melvin couldn't continue. That's on, that's on the referee. Mm -hmm. Right. So was, I wouldn't even say controversy it, controversy is one. It's just disagreement. People are disagreeing with the referee interpreted, right? There's plenty. There has been plenty of standing TKOs without an eight count. Oh yeah. Plenty, plenty, right? We had, Conor McGregor had a famous one against, uh, you know, Mayweather. He said, I wish you would let me fall. It, it happens all the time. Even against Crouch, kind of crouched against the ropes, there's, there happens. He doesn't you're – not, you're not owed an eight count. If the referee sees something that he doesn't think you should continue, he's going to wave the fight off. Whatever that referee saw, that's on him, right? Mm -hmm. So people can boo me and say whatever they want. All I did was, was punch – and fight with everything that I had in me. And I didn't do anything dirty. I didn't punch him late. As soon as he told me to stop, I stopped. And um that that's 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 the situation. You know what I mean? He wasn't on the ground. Whether he whether that constitutes a down fight or not, if it does, I'm not saying it doesn't, and could be my ignorance to it, but that wasn't talked about in the rules meeting. Right. He said three points of contact. He only had two, and his butt was on the ropes. He could have put his butt in the floor if he wanted to go on the ground. I don't know what he was trying to do. I think the right hands that he was kind of catching changed a little bit because that hurt him real bad. And yeah, he kind of bounced up and he had his faculties back pretty quick. But it only takes that split second in fighting for a ref to see, like, you know, something's wrong. And the referee saw, he saw that. He saw Melvin slowly. See, I've seen a lot of fights and I've been in a lot of fights. You look for body language in fights just as much as anything else. Mm -hmm. His body language wasn't in that at that moment. I'm not saying it didn't change because it did. Melvin's a warrior. His body language did change. But in right. that moment, it was not I'm fighting back. It was he was he was kind of almost sinking. It was just yep. plummeting. Everything was going down. I think the referee saw that and thought he needed to he needed to jump in. That's his decision. I did yep. everything that I knew I was going to do. I knew I was going to hit him. I knew I was going to land the punches. I knew the fight was going to get stopped early. I knew it. I told you that before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's nothing against him. I just I knew it. You know, and confidence. Yeah, and and Melvin is an as a, a fantastic fighter. And he's and he we had a good we exchanged some pretty good words after. You know, he was respectable. He was respectful about it. Now to me, to me, man to man, he was respectful about it. I, people tell me he was saying some other stuff you know, later, but to me. As far as my perception of how he took it, he was very professional about it. Um, and I, my hat's off to him for that. You know what I mean? Because I'd have been, I'm not saying I would have been frustrated if I was him either, mm -hmm. but he, you can't, you can't settle in the position he settled in. Right. You can't accept that. He was, that, that, that shows submissiveness. It, sh it shows maybe I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's true or not, right. but visibly that I could understand a referee seeing that and feeling that way. Well, like you said, the body language says a lot, and especially when a ref – the ref's job is to keep the fighters safe as possible in there. Correct. I mean, when he knows somebody's getting their ass beat completely, and especially when you see an arm or something go limp, that's saying, okay, 
he's obviously done. And I think that was the point where the ref yeah. finally stopped. Yeah. And said it yeah. was a so if you watch the broadcast, his right arm goes from defending himself and it just falls. Mm -hmm. And that's when the referee jumps in. Right. So, and Scott, you and you know, as well as I do, you're all, everybody's going to have haters to an extent, regardless. And you take them you, again, you take that negativity and you push it into positive. Yeah. That's all you got to do. And, yeah. and especially in a fight world, and with somebody at the caliber of Melvin Gillard's name, not taking anything away from him because he's an outstanding fighter, tremendous guy from what I know. Mm -hmm. um, but in this situation, a lot of his fans and, and people that know him by name and have no clue who you were, you know, oh, that's, you know, oh, that's a that's a bullshit stoppage. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he's hitting yeah. him down on the ground. Again, you got to you got to push that stuff out of your mind. You know, it, it, it is what it is. You did what you absolutely should have done. If the ref saw anything before that, he should have stepped in sooner. He obviously did not. And, you know, uh, to me, like I said before, I think that the rule should be that if you do fall up against the, the ropes as far as he did, not necessarily backing up again against them, but if you do fall down where it stops your momentum from falling all the way down to the canvas, I think that should have been a knockdown at that point. But it is what it is. I'm not the ref. He was. Yeah, and I can't disagree with that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and be stupid about it either. And You know what I mean? I, I understand that, and I, I can't say that I disagree. Right. You know what I mean? But all we can do is the best we can in that environment. You know what I mean? And in that specific moment, I did what I was supposed to do, just like you already, you know, touched on. Yep. And I don't have any sort of negative takeaways from that at, at all. Maybe I should. Maybe I don't know. I don't. In my mind, I did exactly what I knew I was going to do, and that's and that's get a victory by either by some version of knockout, and that's and that's what happened in forty eight seconds of round number one. Say that again. Forty eight seconds, seconds, folks. I'm pretty I'm look. I'm just going to say this. Look now, you can say it, you can call it what it is. All right, that's faster than Eddie, than Izzy beat him. All right, so I'm, does that make me the middleweight champ? I don't know. I mean, but that's faster than. No, I'm just I mean, you're, you're it's a great segue <laughs> to the next question. No, sir. I'm just kidding. No, but Israel Asanya didn't beat him in 48 seconds. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I'm just kidding. You know, that's just having fun. But you know, it was it was a good time, man. And um, it's it's certain. Like I said before, it's, it's uh. You can't you, you can't take it away from you. You know, years from now, you know, people will forget about controversies and it's still an L next to his name and a W next to mine. Very true. You know, and I'm, and I'm and I'm very proud of that. So what's next, sir? What are you looking forward to the future fight? What What's what's on your agenda? Well, uh -oh. Uh, uh oh, hang on now. It's uh, it was, I'm at work, obviously. <laughs> That was, that was okay. It wasn't that wasn't a victim, I promise. Okay, good. That's good. That's so, good. Uh, yeah, BKFC really likes me, man. They 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 like me, and I knew they would. Um, and they already they already want me back. Um, it's it's I don't know what I can or can't say. They want me back this summer. Okay. Um, and I'll be I'll be a co-main event. Nice. So as, far as I'm being told, as far as I'm being told on one of their events this summer, I'll be co-main. And um, I, I I like I said before, man, this is this is going to be. I'm going to be, if I'm not already, I'm, I'm going to be one of the best in the world at this sport. You know, you are I, going I, I can, to force can, me to get on a plane and come down to Florida this, this summer <laughs> and watch in, in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should, man. It'll be a good time. We'll, we'll, we'll do one of these in person. There you go. I like that. Scott, as always, we got to do rapid knockout. All and right, we call go. this second round knockouts because this isn't the first time we go. So we got five different questions. Absolutely nothing to do with the fighting industry. Are you ready, sir? I am ready. Question number one, DC or Marvel? Marvel. Oh, all day. Who's your all favorite? Day. Um, you look kind of like Captain America, so I go with that. I've been, I've been, I've, I've, I've heard that <laughs> a time or two. Uh -huh. But uh, my favorite's probably old, like old X Men. I mean, like okay, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's my probably my favorite. But now the Avengers are so damn big. My kids are huge Marvel, Marvel fans. So it, it's it's Marvel in my house all day, every day. Okay. Second question, going back to your childhood now. He-Man, Masters of the Universe. Okay. Or G.I. Joe's. He-Man for me. He-Man. Yeah. And then they, they, had, they had the movie with Dolph Lundgren. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You see, you know, it's I for sure. have the power. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember yeah. how wicked Beast Man looked in that? Oh, my God. Yeah. That was a great I, movie. I it, was, it, it was it was it was actually it was a shit movie, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was a terrible movie. <laughs> but it was but great it, to us. But at the same time, it's amazing. And that's weird how movies can be that way. 
It is. And it stuck yeah. with me. I'm ready for a reboot. Mm-hmm. Third question. This is a serious question. Okay. Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison? Oh, shit. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go Happy Gilmore. Okay. Why? But it's, it's, but it's close. But see, Why would you pick Happy wow. over Billy? The Just price is wrong, bitch. The price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> and then you got Billy Madison that this it wasn't even him, but the speech at the end that the teacher gives him. Oh, that was old. great. Oh my God. And may God have mercy on your soul. I mean, <laughs> no, but happy I think Happy Gilmore was was overall was was funnier just because the whole cussing on national TV and this where are you going to my club, punk? And he throws a kid in the ground. Like, ah, oh, that was said that's good. That was a good question, you that's bastard. Good. See? I'm liking it. Now he's, here's an even better one. Family Feud or Price is Right? I'm coming with the tough ones today, brother. Just because – so the, the, I'm going to have to go – I'm going to go Price is Right only because for any time I – like just memories of not going to school, which happened to both uh-huh. of and just watching the Price is Right at home, knowing like I, I should be in school right now, but I'm not, and I'm watching Price is Right. So – uh-huh. Right, because it, it I was a rebel. I like that. And Bob Barker. I mean, I'm sorry. No offense to Drew Carey. Go back to Happy Bob Gilmore. Bar- yeah, right. Bob Barker ruled mm-hmm. Price is Right forever. Yep. The last question of the day. This might be the toughest one for you, Mr. Irish Spartan. Okay. 300. Oh, shit. Gladiator. All right, so as far as being – as a film, Gladiator is a better film. Okay. But as far as what gets me ready to freaking do work, it's 300 for sure. That's, 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 that's probably one of the best of all time as far as getting me to this day, as far as getting me pumped up. And, and I watch it on fight week almost every single time I fight. I watch 300. Do, do you watch movie. the first one or the second one? Do you the watch first both? One, okay. The first one is by far, in my opinion, by far the, the better. But then I agree. the movie gets me freaking pumped up, dude. That's good. I like it. See, I come with the good even, questions, man. Dude, I even use references like that. Like I say, we fight in dark. Like I mean, that that movie is like that's exactly how I think about freaking, you know, fighting and, and battle in general. You know, that's yep. definitely my mindset. If he takes the sun away, we we'll fight, fight in the dark. shade. Yeah, we that's fight it. in the shade. I love it. Mm-hmm. The Irish Spartan Scott O'Shaughnessy. Thank you again for hanging out on Combat Zone. Appreciate Give it. Give them man. shout outs to who you got, brother. You know, yours, yours. Yeah, same thing. You know. um, Mary Jane's House of Glass for me in this last fight was huge. Big time sponsor for me. Um, walking threat, you know, um, my management team, obviously Devil's Advocate Management. My coach, Kenny Stevens, uh, the Fight Sports uh, Focus podcast was, you know, we did a good show with them. The BKFC has brought me on board and make, they really made me feel like, you know, one of their own and uh, signed me to another quick fight. You know, and Dave Feldman, Nate Shooks, you know, for sure, you know the matchmaker over there. He's probably one of the most busiest damn matchmakers in the world right now, and he's he's he still always returns our messages and calls. Nothing but class act for everybody over at BKFC. Um, to the fans who supported me and watched, and even the ones that booed me, the ones who don't, you know, whatever. I can if if you don't think I am this type of fighter, and you you want to have any ill thoughts in your mind in, in your minds about the way I performed against Melvin, just keep watching. And keep watching them go down every time. You know what I mean? Every time a fight, it's gonna be it's gonna be ending in some sort of exciting fashion. I can assure you that. So just thank you for the support, whether it's that, you know from the the good or the negative. Either way, I appreciate it, and I look forward to to having everybody you know see me compete again. So thank you. We cannot wait to watch you fight in the shade again, brother. <laughs> every time, dude. It's all dark. It's all That's dark. right. That's right. Scott O'Shaughnessy, mm-hmm. folks, the Irish Spartan. Back in action this summer. Sounds yep. like a big fight coming up. Yep. We look forward to watching that, and we look forward to seeing you grow and succeed more in your career, sir. Thank you again for joining us on Combat Zone. And as always, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Combat Zone on Friday nights. This week, UFC 260 Pick'ems with Nate Mayhem Manus. We'll see you guys then. Until then, we're out. Peace. Thank you.